we had a, we had a lot of uh, similar successes for the same reasons with Antec when we were doing uh, converters and things like that for them, uh, return band things. Um, you know, the, I, I had known John Egan since I had met Phil Hamlin because he was uh, when when Hamlin took all of his products to Annexter, John was the guy selling it. And of course, John's the guy that essentially convinced the Annexter brothers to form Antec. Mm -hmm. uh, a real visionary, a marketing guy. He was a, a former you, football player too, right? He played for the Miami Dolphins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah a Boston College guy, uh, a dynamic fellow, uh, knew how to sell things, uh, knew how to build a sales organization. Uh, but uh, and uh, it. it Excellent contacts with John Malone. Uh, kind of a key at that time of the, mm -hmm. that time of the business. Uh, that's basically uh, that's how TechScan and Antec got put together because um, Billy, uh, um, a guy running uh, George Fletcher and Bill, uh, oh the old Gerald guy that ran TechScan, Lambert. Uh, they were buddies. Uh, Fletcher uh, was a, a dynamite salesman, and he was he had Malone's ear, as as did uh, Lambert and Egan. And it, at the time, TCI had investments in both of those companies. Uh, he, you know, basically that's at the time frame when when Malone hired Leo Hendry, and Hendry said, you know, you got to. You, you can't show this sort of partiality uh, uh, if you want to sell this business. And that's what he hired Leo to do. Mm -hmm. So that's how that got put together. Uh, and uh, that's probably how I got some of the business was that uh, they needed uh, return band products. They didn't have the capability at the time. Uh, they were, you know, splitting at the seams and trying to figure out who was doing what. They were trying to integrate that Mexican facility and it was just a real mess. Uh, so we, you know, we, we, we did a lot of work for them. We did uh, all those block converters. We did um, agile ones. We did fixed block converters that went out in the node that were phase locked. Uh, we, did, uh, we did a node design for them that we ended up owning ourselves, and uh, which we sold many thousand of to Australia, where they actually went, they actually got sold to China through an Australian company. We built all of those in Atwater. Have you ever calculated how many hundreds of thousands of units have uh, gone through Olson I, I and Tomco? No, I really haven't. Uh, I, I really haven't, no. It's been a lot. I mean, you know, you, you probably, you know, the Gerald products were probably between ten and fifteen thousand, uh, we had uh, the one triple modulator that, you know, we sold and we sold and we and, and we we sold them until two years ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, we still sell one or two a year, but you know we were selling a lot at a time at the time. Uh, we sold, you know, every hotel that Time Warner served in this country had a head end full of those triple channel modulators. Uh, we, uh, many years ago, in the late 80s, we uh, stumbled into the old Sacram the Sacramento Army Depot and met a Navy guy, a uh, Hispanic man. I can't remember his, his first name. His last name was Hernandez. But, and he said that there was a requirement for a modulator that uh, could withstand being dropped from a helicopter in Iraq and it had to be rugged. It had to be push button, real rugged push buttons to change channels, and you know uh, that sort of thing. He said, "I don't have any money for it." He said, "But if you can demonstrate that to the guy at Navy Broadcasting in Washington D.C., he said you'll probably sell one for every submarine in the fleet." Hmm. Well, you know, okay, so that could be a couple hundred units. Because they only had one channel on a sub and they wanted to do two. So we had the agile capability and uh, 
Seth was still around at the time, uh, and he was Seth was a very good designer. He really was. And so he, I told him what it had to do. I said Seth, you know, they got, we got to be able to drop this thing and still work. And I says we can make the electronics do that, but you know, this is going to bend. We didn't. You know, all that kind of stuff. And so we put together a box in about three months. Got some aircraft switches from a company that made aircraft switches, military aircraft switches, uh, down in L.A. Uh, and, you know, you pay 50 bucks for these things, but whatever. So we had two of those push button, click, 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 click. Contuned on all the channels they wanted, and everybody's happy. Took it over there to this guy. And he said, give me a couple of months. And then uh, we get a call from this guy at Navy Broadcasting. He said, uh, can you make more of these? Yeah, that's what we want to do, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, so we did. Uh, it ended up in every ship in the fleet, wow. not just the submarines. And we sold them all through our distributor Midwest because they had great military contacts uh they had uh you know they they know how to they just base in the inventory the product the other is one of those deals that you stumble across is that if we were to sell it to the navy direct we would have had to have a source inspector here mm -hmm. for every unit we sold but if we sell it to a distributor you don't have to do that <laughs> so it was well worth the margin we gave up, uh, which we probably ended up ahead of the game. And, uh, you know, we sold a lot of those units. But uh, what else did we sell in volume? We sold uh, the uh, the little candy bar modulator that Jerry and I did uh, that was uh, called the LCM 500. And we could put 12 of those in a one and three quarter with a power supply. And, uh, you know, it was only that big. It looked like a candy bar. And yet it could tune to 550 megahertz. We must have sold 10,000 of those. And, of course, then the Chinese, that's when the Chinese started coming in. And everything went totally south. Uh, they were doing it for 100 bucks. That was less than our material cost. Uh, they weren't doing the same modulator, not the same performance, uh, but it's, you know, cost is king. And uh, so we, we just, you know, walked away from that business. You can still see them on eBay.